Hello, it's FAQ Stealth Drop Day over here in the Old World section of the Warhammers. So I hope you're all doing well. Hope you checked out my Dwarf Lore video uh, and, uh, and any other video. And I hope you liked and subscribed because that lets me know that you care about what I'm putting out here. Which I'm trying to do better. I'm trying, trying. But I'm excited to talk some Old World. And boom, over here on the download section of the Warhammer community... I don't know where today. Look at that. Look at that. Let's even refresh it just to be safe. I didn't miss a single one. Yep. It's, I mean, they put the numbers wrong because they're not American, but that's fine. So, uh, yeah, we had three updates today. Uh, Forces of Fantasy, Ravening Hordes, and the core rulebook. No article, no nothing, just a little stealth drop. Uh, I woke up, saw it on Twitter. I was like, oh, well, I got to get a video on that. Uh, it's a busy day at work, so that's why it's coming out a little late for everybody. But, hey. We get there when we get there, right? All right, anyway, so let's start over here with the Ravening Hordes FAQ Rata version 1.1. Only two pages. So, but we're starting big. Night Goblins. Change the option to include 0 to 3 fanatics as follows. Include 0 to 1 fanatics per 10 Night Goblins to a maximum of 3, plus 25 points each. A lot of you might be going, hmm. That's not that big a deal. I'm running a big block of them anyway. Well, you are, because you're a sane, sensible human being, and I love you. But a lot of people out there might have been doing units of five and just packing them with fanatics and just giving terrible, terrible games. I don't think ever, there was a ton of people doing that, but it was one of those things where you know, like, I could do this. I shouldn't, but I could. So let's just stamp it now. Let's just put it out, you know, nip it in the butt. And yeah, there we go. So if you want to bring three night goblins in the unit, you better have 30 night goblins at least. But you might as well bring 40. I mean, why not? They're night goblins. Bring a horde. So, big change, but I think that's a good one for the health of the game in general. Oh boy, and I'll lose a few more. Alright, so, what happens to a fanatic that moves into or through the front arc of Bretonian peasant bowmen equipped with defensive stakes? As a person who recently has a painted unit of this peasant bowman, I'm curious as well. Nothing good. The humor is still here, everybody. Uh, defensive stakes function very, function very much like a linear terrain. Therefore, a fanatic that moves into contact with a row of defensive stakes from any direction comes to a very sudden stop and is removed from play as a casualty. So, all right, it's just like terrain. So, all of a sudden, as a bowman, pretty defensive with this. Also, we're trying to keep a, a whilst counter for this one. Uh, so, just keep that in mind here. Uh, okay. When shooting a Doom Diver catapult, the template can be moved D3 inches after scattering. Can I use this to move the template so that it hits an enemy character that is within 3 inches of a unit? A character that could not usually be targeted by shooting. Yes, the template must be moved the full distance ruled on the D3. If that allows you to position it to hit an enemy character, you may do so. Sneaky Goblin Doom Divers steer their flight and attempt to hit the best possible target. So this is completely in character. I love it. We're using narrative and, and, and theme to in, inspire these rules and let you do fun, cool stuff that can be thematic and memorable. I'm here for that. All right. On to the Tomb Kings. Are the effects of the Casket of Souls, Balance Spell, Light, and Protection cumulative? No. Okay, that's fair. Moving on. <laughs> it's, it's just fair. Um, I've used the Casket. I can't see... I still want to bring the Casket, I feel. But I'll, I'll have to re-examine it because I, I, I am not reading deep into these right now. I just want to get the information out there uh, give my takes on them. So I, th I feel that's fine. Um, I don't think it kills the Casket of Souls by any means. Alright, and Orcs, Goblin, Tribes, Arcane Journal. And I like this too, by the way. Um, they're throwing in the Arcane Journals into the right Ravening Horde, so it's... There's not an Arcane Journal FAQ. It's just like, oh, it's... And there'd be too many documents. This is, this is nice. It's clear. It's clear. I like this. All right. If a black orc war boss as a general of nomadic wa, can I take a unit of boar boys as a core choice? No, a black orc war boss is not an orc war boss. Okay, clarification. That's that's fine. Uh, doesn't bother. I mean, I don't play orcs and goblins, so if it, if you play orcs and goblins, that bothers you. Let me know down below. All right. In a nomadic wa, I can take one black orc boss per black orc chariot. If I take a black orc boss mounted on a chariot, does that count? No, you can take one Black Orc boss per Black Orc Chariot taken as a core or rare choice. It's not matter what the boss is mounted on. 
Okay, a little sneaky there. I get you. Uh, cute little clarification, but makes sense. All right, can a troll hag be the general of an orc and goblin tribe's army made using the Grand Army Composition List? No, a troll hag is a rare choice in the orc and goblin tribe's Grand Army Composition List. She can, however, be the general in a troll horde. Okay, so yeah, if you want to be, uh, you want to be a, a troll horde, get your troll troll hag in. That's how you do it. Simple, clean. I like it. All right. Now for the forces of fantasy. So, first up, uh, the Imperial Griffin Special Rules. Delete two heads from the end of the Imperial Griffin's list on Special Rules. Which is just uh, one attack. So he's losing, you're okay, you're losing attack. So I guess, hmm, well I don't think that cost, that didn't cost points to upgrade, so maybe it's just allowing you to just Hey, drop it. Just make a make a griffin that you think is cool. You don't have to all look like Carl Franz. You can have the two headed. So, I, I'm sure that extra attack was nice, but I'm also sure that if it didn't cost points, then it was just forcing people to buy the two head option. So now it's just like, okay, just do what you want. That's fine. Okay, uh, Arcane Journal Dwarven Mountain Holds. It's an FAQ before we actually get the Arcane Journal uh, pre-order. Granted, this Saturday there'll be lots of. Uh, versions of it out. Uh, obviously, we'll do a review on the podcast when it's in hand, and we've had it for a little bit for digestion. Um, no need for no need to rush out. A lot of people rush out and do it, and that's fine. Um, I would love to be getting the early copies to do reviews for you guys, but we're not there yet. Maybe one day. So, but if you like and subscribe, it may help. All right. So the Axe of Dargo change the strength characteristic of the Axe of Dargo to strength plus two. Is it strength plus one? Is it strength plus three in the book right now? Well, it doesn't matter. It's strength plus two. It's been corrected. You will never get to experience anything but strength plus two on this axe. All right, now just Dwarven Mountain Holds. Can a royal champion in a unit of hammers put weapon runes on their great hammer? No. Weapon runes can only be inscribed upon a hand weapon or great weapon. And whilst a great hammer is similar to a great weapon, it is not a great weapon. A great hammer is a unique type of weapon that has its own profile rules. Okay, that's fair. That's that's more playing with 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 words to try and get what you want to to do that. But you know, like think think about the keywords. Keywords are, are are important, I guess, in a way. Now, all right. So when a when a model with a slayer slayer of demons or slayer of dragons special rule hits an enemy unit using the death blow special rule, does that hit benefit the slayer special rule? Yes. Cool. I like it. All right, Empire Man. Can a steam tank's steam cannon fire grape shot? Hmm. Yes, grape shot can be fired by any cannon, i.e. any weapon that fires using the cannon fire special rule, as described on page 226. Neat. <laughs> I, 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 don't make me want to play Empire. You're going to. Yeah, why not fire grape shot? That is cool. Um, there's a guy inside loading it, so I can't imagine why he can't load it with just other crap to, to do the grape shot. Right, another steam tank question here. Can a steam tank's engineer commander and a steam cannon both shoot in the same turn? Fascinating. Yes! Man, they're, they took away your attack on your griffin, and they're giving you all a steam tank love. That's, that's what they're doing, Empire players. The, in, the engineer commander doesn't fire the steam cannon. Imagine there's I, imagine there's a, a very hot and bothered crew hidden away inside the steam tank whose endeavors leave the engineer commander free to fire their own weapons. Now you could, I mean, if you want to go all the way, you actually model the inside of that and you put a guy in there. Could be a dwarf even. He might, ha he might have fun being in there. All right, and then uh, what's the blue? I always forget what the blue is. Updated entries will be highlighted in blue. Okay, so this is an update to prior ruling on the Wood Elf Realms. Uh, can a Wood Elf Realm army that includes an ally contingent place an additional wood using the Woodland Ambush rule? Yes. Note, however, that an ally contingent of Wood Elves taken as part of any other army cannot. Okay. Boom. And there we go. Forces of Fantasy. So, fun. Good stuff. Uh, now for a slightly bigger one. It's only still 11 pages. The, uh, the core rules. So, what do we got up here first? So fly, page 170, if you're reading along at home. Change first paragraph to the rule. Whenever a model with a special rule moves, it can choose either to move across the ground as normal, using its given movement characteristic, or to move by flying through the air. 
when a model flies, it uses a special fly movement characteristic shown in the brackets. So fly X, etc. Models that choose to move by flying. Okay, so you don't have to fly if you don't want to. I'm sure there's a reason somewhere. Otherwise, that's why this question was here, I guess. All right, monster handlers, page 173. Change the third sentence to the paragraph to the rule two. On a roll of one to four, the monster loses a wound. On a five plus, one of the handlers is removed instead. Okay. I mean, since handlers, I guess, are not just wounds now, I'm not sure. I've not played with anything uh, with monster handlers yet, if I'm honest. So if you know how this impacts, if it does impact anything majorly, please just let, let us know in the comments. We'd, I'd really appreciate that. So would everybody else. All right, we need a reserve move update here. Change the first sentence of the rule to unless it charged, marched, or fled during the movement phase. A unit with the majority of the models that have a special rule make a reserve move at the end of the shooting phase of its turn, after all shooting has been resolved. Okay, I think that's more of clarification of when exactly it happens is what it, that sounds like. So, good, now we know. All right, now for some FAQs. General principles. What happens if a hit roll on a scatter dice for an object that moves in a random direction? Do I use the small arrow on the hit icon to determine the direction? I've had that back and forth. We've been playing it that it just stays there. Uh, essentially, objects that move in a random direction scatter, as described on page 95. Such objects only move in the direction shown by the small arrow of the hit icon if the rules tell you they do so. Otherwise, the object does not move. Okay. All right. There we go. Just some nice clarification on that. All right. If some of the opponent's attacks cause multiple wounds to be lost per unsaved wound they cause, in what order are those unsaved wounds applied to my unit? This is the type of rules where my head hurts and I don't like it and I don't care that much, but we're here. Let's get through it. Any, oh, sorry. Apply unsaved wounds to a unit one at a time and one model at a time. When a model is reduced to zero wounds on its profile, it is removed from play as a casualty. Described on page 102. If the model loses more wounds than it has on its profile, the excess wounds are lost. They do not spill over into other models in the same unit. There we go. So you hit me with you hit me with uh, I have one wound guy. You hit me with a cannon. Take D three. He takes three, but I only do one. So I don't spill over. With this in mind, apply unsaved wounds that cause models to lose all their remaining wounds first. Killing blow. Blah 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 then unsaved wounds that cause multiple wounds. And finally, unsaved wounds that cause a single wound to be lost. Okay, so an order of operations for how we should apply the wounds. Clarification's always good. And as I say, no, it's mind-numbing, but hey, it's good to know. They may pop up, and it may become useful a couple times here and there for you. All right, movement. What constitutes a move? Quite <laughs> pretty much, I've read this one. Um, if you touch your models and you sh change their position in any way, counts as a move. Like, just common sense it. I'm not going to read that one. <laughs> what is the furthest a model can move? Or what is the furthest a model can move? No model can move more than twice its movement characteristics, or when movement is determined by a dice roll. Uh, it was, uh, such as when a unit charges fleeing. Further than the distance rolled. There are, of course, exceptions to this, the most obvious being when a unit's marching column marches a triple its movement characteristics when models move by the effect of a spell, when a unit is obliged to continue to move rather than end on top of another unit, and obligatory moves such as when a charging unit wheels, blah, 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 blah. Note that when a unit wheels, those at the rear do not really follow a long curving path, as it might appear when mar moving a large block. Uh, just this clarification. D double notes here. Double notes. Um, it's just telling you how to do it. But also, I feel like these questions get asked without having truly played the game and done it like maybe maybe, maybe some of these have but like, I feel like the more I play the game the less I me and my opponents and people I play with regularly are concerned about that as much like it's you know we're, 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 we're treating the game as fun and having a good time and like we're, we're playing hard but when you're physically doing it it's much easier than what it is on reading it on paper including this so just just go practice it go play some games that's my suggestion all right next question for Okay. Oops, still movement. Okay. Can a wizard cast a conveyance spell during a turn in which they charged? No. Okay. If 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 they charge, they cannot cast the movement spell. Sure. Clarification. Alright, now we're in shooting. 
How many magic missiles or magical vortexes can a wizard attempt to cast during a shooting phase? As many as they know. So, Rob over at the Honest Wargamer can have his fun. That's what this says. Because uh, he loves his giant circles on the table. <laughs> there are exceptions. Some magic items allow wizards to know extra spells, but limit how many they can cast per turn, for example. Wizard can usually attempt to cast each of the spells once. So if he knows four, he's level four, throw them out there. Have fun. Make, make walls. All right, now for challenges. Two characters are engaged in the challenge. Whilst their units battle around them, at the end of the battle, the losing unit might fall back in good order or give ground. If their enemy pursuers or follow up, does the challenge continue? Okay, so for giving ground, uh, I've assumed it was because it's the same round of combat, but fall back in good order I thought was a new combat. Um, but yes, stated as page 211, if both participants in a challenge survive the round, and if the combat continues, the challenge continues. So I'm still kind of curious because, like, what constitutes a new like? Do I have to do more reading on my part, or maybe we need further clarifications? Uh, I could be reading stuff wrong too, but yep, you're you're stuck in a combat if you keep that combat going. That makes that part makes sense. All right, now universal special rules. All right. Model has a, with a split profile has impact X. Special rule: Does the models cause impact hits, or do all parts of the model cause impact hits? No impact hits are only made by the mount, not by its rider. In the case of a chariot, impact hits are made by the chariot itself, not the beast that draw it. If a rider has their own impact hits, X special rules: These are made separately by the rider. Okay. If unit has impact hits, X rule overruns or pursues into contact with an enemy unit, counts as having charge in the next turn. If it moved far enough, will we be able to make impact hits? If the unit is charged in the flank or rear, <laughs> uh, comet phase of the next turn, can it direct its impact hits against the charging enemy unit? No, a model can only direct impact hits against an enemy which is, it has moved into base contact with. Remains case, even if challenge arises involving a model within a unit. Okay, so big block. There we go. You charge in, something else comes into your flank eventually. Yeah, however it works. Yeah, so okay, so you have to move into combat to give the impact hits. Got it. Clear. Makes sense. Right, can models in the rear ranks of a unit shoot a large target? Because you usually block your line of sight. Yes! As stated on page 172, a model can draw line of sight to a large target over through other models. That is exciting. Um, mostly because you don't have to chase hills if you're fighting somebody that has lots of large targets. You can maybe form up into smaller, tighter ranks because everyone behind the others, you can have to be three or four ranks deep, and as long as they have range, they can see the large target. That is phenomenal. Uh, and that's actually, yeah, that's a that's a big change with a lot of uh, ways to play this army, too. So, well, with multiple armies. Um, hey, there's no hill, but you brought monsters. Ooh, you're in trouble if I brought shooting. Uh, whew. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. I like that. I'm happy for that. Even someone who will eventually bring a large target and have shut off and run one round, probably. I'm still happy for that. Because you know, I'm just thinking, like, okay, there's no hills on the board, but you're fighting someone as large target. You can be more grouped up, or you can be more spread out. I just, sorry. I, I, I feel like that's a very big one. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, units with Motley Crew special rule use the armor value of the majority of the models. What if there is an even number... What if I made it perfectly even just to just to get in your face and make you have a rules question? Just use the better armor value. Okay. Yeah. You want to play that game? Just use it. I don't care. You. <laughs> Is the armor value of regeneration save improved by shield or barding? No. I don't feel like... I don't know why that's a question. <laughs> Alright, an update here. If a model of regeneration X plus special rule passes its regeneration save... Against an attack with multiple wounds, X special rule, do I need to roll the dice if the number of multiple wounds is generated by a dice roll? If a model has more than a single wound, yes. Even though the wounds were saved, they still count towards the combat result to a maximum of plus five for the purposes of overkill and challenge. Okay, so I was actually getting this wrong whenever I played. You do regen save before you take the wounds. I thought you would take a regen save on all the wounds. That's probably a Sigmar type rule set getting to my head with that, so... Okay, but it's nice, you can still count towards overkill. Alright, so... If a model with a split profile has stop attacks, special rule to all models... Okay, so just, just like everything, 
like the impact hits. Um, okay, do models that cause terror cause it in models that cause fear? No, models that cause terror cause fear in models with fear special rule, even though models are, are normally immune to fear. Gotcha, it's a hierarchy. That makes sense. That's how we. That's how it always kind of has been. All right. Unusual formations. This is a fun one. How do we determine the center of a skirmish unit? The center point that is equally distant from the models at the extremes of the group. However, when considering blast templates, the purpose of placing a blast template over the center of a unit is to ensure a significant number of models are underneath it. In the case of a unit of skirmishers, this is not always possible. Therefore, you may place the center hole in a blast template over the model closest to the center of the unit. Okay, so a little leeway there makes the blast template centering issue. Yeah, that, that's. I've never had an issue with this in any games I've played, but you know, as, a, as someone who has TO'd, I've not TO'd Old World yet, but someone who has TO'd, that's a valuable piece of information, and I'm glad they clarified it. All right, so sometimes when a unit of skirmishers charges or is charged, some of the models cannot move far enough to form up with the rest of the unit. What happens to the, those models? As someone who plays a fairly big skirmish unit with Sisters of Avalon, I've had this, so I'm curious myself what this means. The unit loses coherency, as described on page 184. This means models belonging to the unit must be removed from play as casualties until the unit becomes coherent. <sighs> okay, changes how I'm going to play some things sometimes. <laughs> That's for sure. But, good to have clarified. Alright, characters. If a unit that is subject to any leadership modifiers uses the General's Inspiring Presence special rule, do they ignore the modifiers? No, the modifiers will still apply. For example, if a unit loses a round of combat to terror, causing an enemy with minus one modifier, the leadership caused by terror applies to whichever leadership character's going. So just because he's inspiring, you're still afraid a little bit. All right. If my battle standard bearer refuses a challenge and retires from combat, can other units still benefit from the Hold Your Ground special rule? Not whilst. Character unit is engaged in the model that is okay, so yeah. If you're in the back, you're not you're not waving that banner. Alright. Let's see what section are we in now? Stone characters. Okay. If I have a character with an armor value of six plus mounted on a chariot with an armor value of four plus, for example, am I obliged to use the chariot's armor value? No, you choose which armor value is better. However, allowing for magical armor and other special rules, better is somewhat subjective. Obviously, it means a 4 plus armor is better than a 6 plus, but there's often more deciding factors. So, choose which one you think is better based upon the rules. Basically, when the rule says choose, you're given a choice. Okay. Uh, does the presence of a unit of a character... Does the presence in, of a, in a unit of a character who, whose base takes up two spaces for one more models in two or more ranks reduce the rank bonus? No. And I'm pretty sure this is there simply because we have that new Rune Lord who's taking up multiple spots. So, that makes sense. All right. Can a character who's within the fighting rank of their unit, but not in base contact with the enemy, move through ranks so they are in close they, so that they are? No. Characters can move through the ranks into the fighting rank, but cannot move within the fighting rank. Uh, I think that was that felt pretty clear to me, but always always nice to see more clarification. Can a character be placed amongst a unit's command group? Yes. Okay, that's fun. That's fun. All right. My unit wishes to shoot. An enemy lone character. However, the enemy unit is more than three inches away from the character presents a closer target. Can I shoot the lone character? Yes. The rule that a lone character cannot be shot at unless they are the closest target only extends that they're within three inches. Okay, gotcha. Clarification there. Alright. So weapons of war. The armor value of a if the armor value of a ward save improved by a shield of barding. No. Who's asking this? <laughs> Stop it. War Machines. If the wound's characteristic of a war machine and its crew are different, how to determine the unit's strength? In such cases, use the wound's characteristic of the crew. Makes sense. Uh, do Warhammer Armies. Do points I spend on the core units within an ally contingent count towards a minimum percentage of core? No. <laughs> I feel like that's been answered before. Um, does a spell cast on a regimental unit affect its detachments or vice versa? No. Spells that affect the unit only affect the units they are cast upon. Lores of Magic. Does the spell Plague of Rust reduce the armor value of war? No. Stop. Do potions affect models' mounts? No. <sighs> Who's asking these questions? Stop it. Have fun with this game. We see what you're doing. Stop it. Alright, and the last one. 
How many spells does a wizard with an arcane familiar know? For example, does a level 3 wizard know 3 spells from 2 lores, 2 from 1, or does he know 6? Okay, this is a fine clarification, I guess. Uh, an arcane familiar does not increase the number of spells a wizard knows. It simply allows them to know the spells from different lores. Thus, a level 3 wizard will know 3 spells from 2 lores. Boom. There we go. All right, let's bring Terathi back up here for the moment. So yeah, there's the uh, stealth drop FAQ we got today. Uh, I know this video will be going out kind of late, but I hope you enjoy it. I uh, hope you were to read through. If there's anything I missed or misinterpreted or maybe something I glossed over because I didn't think it was as important, but maybe it is, it's going to happen. Let me know in the comments below. And, uh, you know, feel free to like and subscribe, share this uh, around if you can. Uh, help, help grow. I mean, pushing, trying to get to 1,000 subs eventually here. So we'll get there when we get there, but I appreciate everyone's time. And I will catch you next time. Until next time, happy hobbying and stay Stormcast strong.